If you're a true Raspberry Pi nerd who likes to grab your hardware by the GPIO, then you've probably run into the same issue I have. You've got your Raspberry Pi set up on a breadboard with all the sensors, capacitors, LEDs, resistors, and whatever hardware you need, and everything works fine in your office and in your own environment in front of all your monitors and keyboards, everything you're comfortable with. But sometimes you wanna venture out into the world to test these things, and not too far out into the world because then you'll run the risk of social interaction and we don't want that. Luckily, I have a solution that has pretty much solved that issue for me. It is the Wema, Wema Kit, Wema Zit, I can't say the name, but this is what it is. It is a seven inch touchscreen setup for the Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3 that gives you just enough resolution to get your debug on and pretty much do a lot of things that you may wanna do away from the office. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a look at this today and uh, see if it's worth your hard earned cash. So this is it, this is the Wema kit, and that's how I'm gonna say it for this video. If it's wrong, so be it. But this is the Wema kit seven inch IPS touchscreen monitor for the Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3. It's a seven inch IPS display with a resolution of 1024 by 600. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a good bit for seven inches. Now, not that I would know anything about seven inches, but trust me, it's enough resolution. Compare that to my old Raspberry Pi official seven inch touchscreen that I've had for a couple years, which has a resolution of 720 by 480, and it is a night and day difference. It's like the 1950s called and wants its resolution back, right? Actually, hold on. Hey, Grandma? Yeah, 1950s called and they want their resolution back. No. No, I said 1950s called, what? Yeah, no, I, I ate today. I don't know, like a sandwich and some chips? Yeah, no, no, but 1950, what? No, I'm not cold. We have heat in the house. Why? Look, I know your neighbor is a nice girl, but I'm already engaged. <laughs> Got her. <laughs> so a cool thing about this is that it's USB powered, meaning that you only have one cable to supply power to the Raspberry Pi as well as the monitor. And if you have a high quality power bank, then you should have no issues. Actually, let me just plug it in and, and show you guys. And just like that, we are in running off of our Vim Power USB power bank. One thing that's also cool with this is that they provide speakers. I don't know if you noticed that when I showed it before, but you have some pretty solid speakers that come in with the monitor. And obviously they're not gonna be the world's best speakers, but they're certainly better than some built-in speakers for other systems. And depending on what you're watching, they're better than nothing. If you want to use headphones though, like a decent human being, they also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is impressive considering my over a thousand dollar iPhone 13 Pro does not have that. So neat. Now, another cool thing is that it comes as a stand so you can attach these feet that are provided here and it will basically just sit up and do its thing. Now. That also is a negative because those feet don't actually fold down. So if you wanna throw this in a backpack or something, uh, those feet will probably get in the way and possibly broken unless you unscrew them uh, to transport it. So double-edged sword. Another negative about this is that the product page for this is pretty confusing. It is a 1024 by 600 resolution screen, but on the product page, they say it's compatible with 1080p input signals. It also lists 1280 by 720 as another resolution. So I'm kind of confused at what they're getting at there, but just know that this is a 1024 by 600 resolution screen. Another negative that's not really the fault of the manufacturer here is that 
When you first plug this in, you will have to do some configuration on your Raspberry Pi. And they do provide documentation on their Amazon page about the configuration changes that you need to make, but those actually didn't work for me. I had to email the guy that sent this to me and be like, hey, I'm getting a no signal. What else can I do? And he sent me another thing I could try. And after doing that, it worked. I will link uh, what to do down in the description below. If you buy this and see no signal, then please look in the description and see the steps that you need to take. So let's talk about screen quality. Now I've already said the resolution a billion times in here and that it's an IPS display. So those things combined should be pretty decent on a screen this size. And it is, the viewing angles are really good. Text looks nice and crisp. You have just enough real estate to load up some IDE and debug some code without having to bust out the old person glasses and squint into death. The touchscreen isn't the greatest. Uh, the accuracy honestly isn't good as the older official seven inch Raspberry Pi screen, but it gets the job done. Just don't expect to get this and think you're getting like an iPad experience out of it because you're not. So use cases for this, the main one, like I mentioned before, is portable debugging. So if you have a circuit that you set up that you want to test elsewhere, you can essentially just take this with your circuit. You have full access to the GPIO and test your circuit wherever you want to go. Now, I know you're going to say, well, you could just SSH in and, and, and run everything in the CLI and, and or you can use VNC and blah. Look, you don't always have internet access and the ability to do those things in every scenario. So the fact that you can just bring this along, plug it in and have a one-stop setup to get this up and running is extremely simple and easy to use. Another use case for something like this is retro gaming. And I know you remember retro gaming. We didn't always have 4K, 120 FPS games to play. You played a lot of your games at lower resolutions and this screen is by far good enough for retro titles and combining that with a Raspberry Pi 4, you definitely have enough power for emulation. Another cool use case would be something like setting up Home Assistant on your Raspberry Pi and having a touchscreen available to control everything. So set this up in your living room or in your kitchen and... Okay, no, we're not putting that in the kitchen. Okay, set it up in a closet or a cabinet whatever works best for you. So when you buy this in the box, you get obviously the screen, you get the included speakers, you get the stand legs, you get two separate bags, one for the Raspberry Pi 4, one for the Raspberry Pi 3 that have the adapters needed to connect the HDMI as well as the USB touchscreen. So like I said, it doesn't matter if you have a Pi 4 or a Pi 3, this will work. So what are my thoughts on it? Well, Honestly, I think it's a really good solution and a practical solution to a problem a lot of people have when working with hardware on the Raspberry Pi. No, it's not perfect. And besides my YouTube channel, what is? Now, at a cost of 70 to $80, no, it's not the cheapest thing, but for what you get, I do think it's worth it. So if you wanna check this out, I will leave a link to the product page down below where you can check it out and use my Amazon affiliate link to get one if you want it. But that's all I have. I wanted a quick little review to show you a product that I got sent that I'm actually actively using on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you like this video, drop a like below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much to everybody who watches, especially my Patreons and everybody in the Discord. I sincerely appreciate you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.